We know that many investors live in permanent state of terror because they're afraid of what will happen when the Federal Reserve finally decides to raise interest rates. Now, look, I understand it's something that Fed Chief Janet Yellen indicates is going to happen later this year. Regardless of how you feel about whether or not a rate hike would be the right move, there's no doubt that the possibility is on the table for 2015. So rather than focusing on potential negatives, I got an idea. Maybe we should look at the one group that will benefit dramatically from any rate hike. I'm talking about the regional banks, which will make more money off your deposits, the so-called net interest margin, in a higher rate environment. Take Commerce Bank share, CBSH. It's a regional bank based in the central United States with 195 branches, 392 ATMs, a vast commercial payment business, and a huge online banking business. Now, Commerce reported a strong quarter last week. Three-cent earnings beat off 58-cent basis, 4.9% loan growth year over year. Oh, and it's worth mentioning that a lot of that loan growth is coming from Oklahoma and Texas, despite all the hand wringing about the massive decline in oil prices and how that might damage the financials in those oil rich states. However, this bank would have made a heck of a lot more money if it not for the low interest rate environment that's squeezing all net interest margins. Still, this bank has a lot more exposure to asset management and credit cards than other regional banks, which is how the company managed to deliver robust numbers even in a not so hot environment. Is it time to make room in your portfolio for a regional bank like this one in your portfolio? Let's take a closer look with David Kemper. He's the chairman and CEO of Commerce Banks here. Learn more about his company's doing and where it's headed. Mr. Kemper, welcome to Mad Money. Jim, thank you. Well, glad to be here. All right, sir, you've got some pretty terrific loan growth. You're in some amazing markets, but you're also in some markets people are so worried about. You're in Tulsa. You're in Denver. You're in Oklahoma City. These are places that we're told are going to just nosedive because of oil going down. How are those areas working out for you? Well, they've been terrific for us the uh, last five years, Jim. Um, and I think they're going to be terrific places to do business going forward. That's why we're expanding there. The underlying demographics are great because the business environment is so good. It's a very favorable regulatory and just pro-business. So we're looking for great things out of those areas. And uh, I think the uh, one great advantage we've got in the country, of course, is we're getting lower energy prices, which will be very positive for the stronger business areas. So what you're saying is even though some businesses are being hurt, obviously, an oil drilling company, there's so many other businesses that are benefiting that it's actually a net positive for Commerce Bank shares. Oh, absolutely. We're getting probably triple the loan growth in those markets, and it's about 10 percent of our commercial loans now. So it's been a great place to expand, and we're going to put more resources into there. What a mistake so many funds made tell, saying that you got to get out of the banks in this area. I thought so. Now, total non-performing loans are going down at an incredibly precipitous pace to the point where I'm wondering whether some of these non-performing loans I, that I know that are held for sale. Has some of that property come back to the point that it's actually worth more than you thought it was even a year ago? Well, most, most of those real estate markets uh, are quite stable, and, and we're doing very good lending into there. So, no, the, the underlying business environment throughout our footprint is uh, very strong. Now, do you have uh, – there's kind of an interesting thing going on at your bank, which is that you uh, bought a particular kind of bond uh, that would do b better in a higher inflationary environment. Are you yourself thinking that inflation is going to come back uh, harder than most people think? Uh, I think that inflation will come back. But, uh, you know, I, I learned uh, early on you don't predict interest rates. So one of our big strengths is we have a very strong core deposit base, uh, and that will serve us very well. Uh, it will be very favorable when rates go up because, A, it will mean that the economy is doing well, uh, and, B, it will allow the banks to make a better spread on their deposits. And uh, as you said earlier, core deposits is an essential asset for uh, any bank, and we've got a very strong asset there. Uh, Mr. Kemper, let me ask you kind of a philosophical question. In the last couple of weeks, we've been doing a lot about technology and banking. And we've seen outfits like Lending Club come in and basically say, listen, algorithmically, we can loan faster, we can loan better, we have less risk. Uh, how is that really possible? And, and I know you do a lot of online banking, but do you find that an online algorithm can do as good a job as a human? I think that you have to be very in tune with the way your customer wants to receive his or her uh, services. So we're, we're very uh, involved in online banking, in mobile uh, applications, and I think it's, it's, it's created some great opportunities for our customers. Uh, I've got to be a little skeptical about uh, lending just by algorithms. I think consumer lending is very cyclical. We've been in a very good cycle since the uh, recession, and so it's, it's a long game there. So, no, I think the banks have been very good at staying in the middle of that, and I think we'll continue to do that. We've got a very good consumer lending business. 
do you have uh, an advantage now? During the Great Recession, we had a couple of banks that really took incredible market share in this country. But they're foreign banks, so to speak. They're not from your area. I see the, the uh, arch behind you. I, I, I think of you as a regional banker. Does it matter? Or are people just saying, you know what, I'll do all my business with Bank of America and Wells. I don't care. Regional doesn't mean anything anymore. You know, uh, we think our biggest strength is probably our size and agility. We call ourselves a super community bank, and at $24 billion, we've got the size and the sophistication to really compete with anybody uh, with our commercial customers. But because we're smaller, we communicate better, we deliver products across our different uh, lines better, and it's just a very good place to be, and I think that's why we've gotten better multiples and uh, more following in the market. It's just, it, it's just a better value proposition for our customers and some of the larger financial institutions, in my uh, unbiased opinion. No, I, you have every right to, given the record that you have and how people said that you couldn't, couldn't own your bank because oil went down, it seems like that this was a great time to be doing some buying in Commerce Bank shares. David Kemper, Chairman and CEO of Commerce Bank shares, thank you so much for coming on Mad Money. Jim, thanks very much for having me. It's been great. All right, a lot of banks that were in the areas that uh, he mentioned, Oklahoma, Texas, people were worried about. You just heard that things are better at those places, not worse. That's why this kind of bank makes a lot of sense for your portfolio. Mad Money's back at the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.